Integrated circuits are probably one of the most groundbreaking pieces of technology to come into existence in the past 100 years. They are responsible for revolutionizing the world of power electronics, and without them, switch mode power supplies as we know them would not exist. I would estimate that around 99% of all modern power supply designs use some form of integrated circuit in their design. So for that reason, it's really important for you as an engineer to understand how these devices function and operate. In today's video, we will be doing a beginner-friendly introduction into the world of power management integrated circuitry. That is the integrated circuits that have been specially designed for power management and power supply applications. We will be taking a broad look at what currently exists on the market, we will review some specific examples of integrated circuits, and we will dive into the process of selecting an integrated circuit for your application. My goal for this video is for you to be able to look at an integrated circuit and confidently know whether it will work in your application or not. Later on, we will be doing some specific design examples where we kind of put into practice what we learned in this video, but for now, we're just trying to get our feet wet. So if you're new to the channel, check out the description. There'll be a bunch of links that you might find helpful. And with that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. Now, if you're new to the world of power electronics, you might be wondering to yourself, what even is a regulator integrated circuit? Simply put, a regulator IC or regulator, as you'll often hear it called, is a specially designed integrated circuit that manages and controls the behavior of the power supply. A good way to think of it is sort of like the brain of the power supply. It's like a very tiny computer whose job is to monitor and interact with different components in the power supply circuit in order to make it perform the voltage conversion. To try to paint you a better picture, let's look at an example. Here we have a type of switch mode power supply known as a buck regulator. If you've watched the buck regulators for beginners video in this series, you will know that the key to operating the circuit is in controlling the switching of the MOSFET. And that is where the regulator IC comes in. Its job is to monitor different parts of the circuit and make adjustments to the switching behavior of the MOSFET accordingly. The way it collects data is by making electrical connections to different parts of the circuit. The IC will have a multitude of pins that are each designated as either inputs or outputs and serve a specific purpose. When it comes to the specific tasks the regulator IC performs, there are a few key terms that you should be familiar with. The first one is called line regulation, and it refers to the regulator's ability to maintain a steady output voltage with a varying input voltage. Now the varying input voltage could either refer to a range of input voltages, say 10 volts, 11 volts, 12 volts, 13 volts, 14 volts, or an input voltage signal that has a little bit of ripple or noise. It is necessary for the regulator IC to be able to handle both of these conditions. The next term you should be familiar with is load regulation. And this term refers to the regulator's ability to maintain a steady output voltage with a varying load. This could either mean a range of loads such as one amp, two amps, three amps, or how well the regulator can handle abrupt changes in load which is often referred to as a load step. And that is something we will talk more about in later videos. Then finally, we have what is referred to as fault handling, which is how the regulator responds to different fault conditions. This can include things like having an input voltage that is not within the correct range, having a short circuit on the output, or exceeding the temperature ratings of the design. So pretty much any condition that could cause the circuit to potentially malfunction is going to be included in the fault handling task that the regulator performs. It is important for the regulator to be able to handle these different fault conditions because they can have catastrophic consequences for the rest of the circuit if they're not handled properly. Usually, the regulator will just respond to these fault conditions by either shutting down or restarting. But it's important for you to review the datasheet of the specific regulator IC that you're using in order to get a full understanding of its behavior. Okay, so now that we understand some of the basics of regulator ICs, I wanna do a guided walkthrough of 
TI's website so that you can see some examples of what it looks like on a manufacturer's uh, web page. Okay, so we'll start from the home page, and the first place we'll click on is going to be their products tab. This will show us categories for all of the products that TI offers. The one we will focus on for today's video is, of course, going to be the power management category. Clicking on the power management link, you'll be taken to the page that shows all of their power management products. Note this includes a lot more than just their regulator ICs, so you don't need to worry about being familiar with this entire page. In fact, just to let you in on a little secret, even I haven't explored most of these links, so you definitely don't need to worry about it for right now. So the only link we're going to focus on for today is going to be the one that says AC-DC and DC-DC converters. So clicking on that link will take us to another page where they have broken down their products by topology. And as we mentioned in our first video in this series, the three main topologies that you'll want to be familiar with as a beginner are going to be your buck, boost, and flyback converters, as these will make up probably 90% of your power supply designs. There are some other interesting categories here, and I encourage you to explore things on your own, but in the interest of keeping this video short, we're only going to focus on those three categories for right now. So clicking on one of those three links will take you to another page that has all of the regulator ICs that have been designed for that specific topology. And this is where you'll ultimately start to filter and sort different products in order to pick a specific regulator IC for your application. Clicking on any one of these regulator ICs will take you to its product page where you can find its data sheet and other helpful resources such as application notes, reference designs, and validation boards. This is where it will show you how to properly wire up and use the regulator IC in your design. And this is a typical process for navigating through TI's website. Like I mentioned, the key is just learning how, once you get to that final page that we talked about, just learning how to filter and sort by different categories and different criteria will help you narrow down your selection and ultimately choose a regulator IC for your application which is a great segue into our next segment, which is how to actually choose a specific regulator for your application. For this segment, we're going to focus on buck converters just as an example, but the concepts that we're talking about will be applicable to all regulator ICs. Selecting a regulator IC is actually a lot like selecting any other component for your design. There's going to be a list of important parameters that you should be familiar with in order to determine if the regulator IC is properly rated for your application. So parameters such as the input voltage range, output voltage range, and output current rating are going to be important starting points. In fact, I will say that is usually the first three criteria that I use to sort and filter potential candidates by. And then there are some other important parameters that we'll talk about next. In general, all regulator ICs of a given topology will perform the same essential function of converting that one voltage to another voltage. So in the example of a buck regulator, pretty much all of the ICs in that category will perform the function of stepping that higher voltage down to a lower voltage. The main difference comes in these additional feature sets and options that might come with some of the regulators you can select. So you don't have to worry about any catastrophic malfunctions so long as your part is properly rated for your application. There are going to be some parts that are better suited for certain applications than others, and this is where the additional features come in. These are going to be things such as soft start, current limit, adjustable output voltage, adjustable switching frequency, and external enable are all examples of additional features that your power supply regulator IC might come with. And so the task is just to figure out which of these additional features are essential for your application. So let's take a look at some example regulators that we could choose. One is the TPS 56 3300. In my opinion, this is a great example of your general purpose buck regulator IC. It comes with a minimal feature set, which makes the design phase both simple and easy. Its ratings are sufficient for most applications, so you could probably use this chip in a variety of different projects. 
Now let's look at something that is a little more feature rich, and that is the TPS56836. It has an adjustable switching frequency, adjustable current limit, soft start, and a power good indicator. While some of these features could come in handy in your specific design, the key to remember here is that more features means more complexity with your design, and it could make troubleshooting more difficult if you have a lot of variables that you have to consider whenever you're trying to debug and validate your circuit. In general, the philosophy I like to work with is if you're not sure if you need a specific feature in your design, then you probably don't, so it's not necessary to include it. In just one pro tip, regulators with more pins typically come with more features. So that's like a really quick and dirty way to filter out your potential candidates are by looking at the pin count of the chip. Okay, so one last thing I wanna talk about in today's video is a specific terminology that TI uses when they are talking about their different power management products. If you take some time to browse through on your own, you will see terms such as converter, controller, and module used for some of their products. For example, TI will sell a buck module, a buck converter, and a buck controller. And I'm sure some of you may be wondering, what is the difference between those three? The short answer is that a module will have an integrated inductor, MOSFET, and rectifier diode into the part. So those have all been pre-selected for you. A converter will have just an integrated MOSFET, and a controller will have all external components. So let's take a look at an example of a buck module that TI makes. Here we have the TPS M86 1257 buck module, which is an adjustable step-down converter that can deliver up to one amp on the output. Taking a look at the data sheet for this part, we can see that TI has gone ahead and pre-selected the inductor and MOSFETs for us. So we don't have to do very much additional design work in order to use this part. Then, looking back at the TPS 563300, we can see that it has integrated MOSFETs that have been pre-selected for us. So we still have to do some additional design work, but that part has already been done for us. And then finally, we can look at the LM5148, and we can see that it has all external components. So we will have to specify and select them all ourselves based on our application's requirements. The key trade-off between these three is that you are essentially sacrificing design flexibility for design simplicity. So while a module might require the least amount of effort to drop in and use in your design, it also has the least amount of flexibility if you need to make any design changes. This comes into play whenever you are troubleshooting or doing some validation testing on your design and say you discover that you need to change a couple of parameters in order to make it work optimally. This could potentially be a problem if you use something like a module, which has not a lot of flexibility for you to do that. You might have to go all the way back to the drawing board and reselect the module altogether. This also can impact your ability to carry over designs into another project. In some cases, you may be able to reuse a lot of an old design with just some minor alterations, but if your design isn't flexible enough to allow that, then you would just have to go all the way back to the drawing board and start from scratch. And that is pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much if you made it to the end, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.